Andy Posner. Now that global warming has finally become a mainstream issue, we hear a lot about renewable energy such as wind, solar, like this little solar charger I have here, geothermal, hydroelectric, and even nuclear as alternatives to solve the problem. We also hear a lot about the potential of hydrogen and fuel cells to power our cars and homes. But we are told that this technology is decades away. Well, while it's true that the technology still needs to be improved, the fact of the matter is that there are small numbers of cars being powered by hydrogen and fuel cells in cities today all around the world. And a university in Los Angeles, California already has a hydrogen fuel cell power plant that's generating one megawatt of clean energy. I met with Bill Sullivan, the energy manager at California State University Northridge, to talk about the power plant and how it works. Okay, yeah, we're here at California State University where we've just installed a one megawatt fuel cell. We have four individual 250 kilowatt fuel cells to make that one megawatt. Uh, this is run on uh, natural gas, and there's a reforming process that goes on inside the stack, which is a cylindrical part you see behind me. Uh, and it then turns the natural gas into a hydrogen, and the hydrogen is used in a chemical reaction to a great electricity. Uh, the exhaust that comes out of these is about 700 degrees, and we're using that heat. We're recovering it up in our uh, exhaust in a heat exchanger and dumping that into our heat pump water pump. Eventually, in the future, we'll also have a second coil that's going to be providing it, heating hot water and uh, water for the assuming, hot water for the assuming, uh, and the student heating across the sidewalk. Uh, this project was done all in house with all of our own people. We did the, the purchasing, the installation, all the concrete, all the metal work, uh, piping for the heating, the uh, heat recovery, and the like. It was all done by our own people. The exhaust that comes out of these is almost entirely just CO2 and water. Uh, and we could uh, we could use landfill gas to uh, to uh, feed these if we could if we could get some here. And compared to uh, coal-fired power plants, this is a considerably more efficient uh, uh, system. We uh, are about 43 percent efficient just on the electrical side. We end up about 80 percent by the time we use the uh, heat for recovery. Also. Whereas a coal-fired coal -powered, uh, coal power plant is about 33% efficient, so we have a much better efficiency for the amount of exhaust that we have. So this is called the stack. It's very warm. This is where the uh, electrochemical reaction happens. It's about 1,200 degrees in there, and they have all the fuel cell parts stacked up. And that's where the, the, uh, the hydrogen is, is removed, and then the electrochemical reaction making electricity happens in there. This part over here is called a mechanical balance of plant that has all the mechanical parts to the operation. It's got blowers, it's got reverse osmosis, the control system is in there. And the other, the last part, which is back over here, is called the electrical balance of plant. That's the inverter. That's where the DC is converted to AC and then it's dumped onto our uh, power grid and used from here. things I always think about this operation is how quiet it is considering we're making one megawatt of electricity. The loudest thing we have is our exhaust fan where we combine the uh, exhaust from the units together. And it also takes a very small footprint to make you know, all of this. We're about, I think, 100 feet by um, 40 feet is all that this takes up to make one megawatt of power. Yeah, we'll talk about our heat recovery side of this. You'll see up here the exhaust leaving one of the units comes up, we combine all four exhaust flows from each of uh, the 250 kilowatt micro uh, fuel cells. And they're all combined right there. And then we have a fan that pulls that exhaust up onto the roof, and that's where it goes through our uh, two uh, heat exchangers. That will be uh, the first one. We're taking the uh, 700 degree air and bringing it down to about 190, and we're taking that heating hot water, which is coming out at about 250 degrees, into our heating hot water loop. And when the second part of the project is complete, we're going to be providing uh, hot heating hot water for the swimming pool across the street and the student union as well as their domestic heating hot water. And this is where the fuel is fed into the system from our from the gas company, and it's then pushed pushed into the uh, fuel cell, then into the uh, stack itself, which is where the reforming takes place, which is where it's 
convert it into hydrogen. These are the greenhouses behind me for the uh, biology department, and the, some of the exhaust will be used uh, for carbon enrichment testing if they if they want to do that because the plants are supposed to grow faster with a richer in carbon dioxide environment. And uh, we'll be talking in a minute about our subtropical rainforest that we're going to be putting the rest of the exhaust into. This is the site of the uh, subtropical rainforest I mentioned previously that we're going to be uh, dumping a lot of the exhaust in what's called a free air carbon enrichment uh, system and that should help our rainforest uh, grow faster and the reason why we're doing a subtropical rainforest is because we, we're also collecting the condensate from the exhaust stream and that's going to be a considerable amount of uh, water as well as the uh, process water from the fuel cells themselves. So we're going to have a lot of water and we're going to make use of that here with plants that, uh, that like a, a wet environment. And we're also going to be putting some cooling towers in here for some chillers that we're going to be putting in uh, very close to here and that's going to help keep the uh, temperature up and the humidity levels higher in the uh, general area. By uh, dumping the CO2 into this subtropical rainforest, that should sequester some of the CO2, which means we won't be dumping as much into the environment uh, after it's all said and done. Though this plant uses natural gas to produce hydrogen, it represents a significant step away from traditional fossil fuel energy because no fossil fuels are actually being burned. These are the power plants of the future. The only difference is that the hydrogen will be generated from landfill gas or through electrolysis using renewable energy. And the best part is that the technology is available today and it works.